Yeah. All right. Um, good morning, everyone, and Paul, thank you very much for us to be here. Um, uh, I will and the CBD Secretariat has been partners for eight years by now, and uh, the Global Taxonomy Initiative has provided the most successful capacity building in taxonomy under the CBD program. And thank you very much for colleagues in uh, Guayaquil University. Without your support, um, our parties would not were not able to have an access to this top-notch technology. So we are really up, um, grateful for this com uh, opportunity of, of collaboration. Um, you may have not heard about the Convention on Biodiversity. That is a, one of the largest participated uh, international treaty to for conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity and access and benefit sharing. So uh, use utilization of genetic resources derived from biodiversity uh, of its benefits should be equitably shared uh, between the providers and uh, uh, users. So those are the three pillars, three goals of the convention. And then the parties uh, realize that uh, to achieve those three goals, do we have enough capacity in each party to implement that? First of all, we don't know what the components of biodiversity are. And uh, we cannot move forward without taxonomic capacity. So then, uh, as Jonathan mentioned, taxonomic impediment was mentioned uh, yes, the, at the COP2, uh, at the very beginning of the history of the convention. So I start with the latest decision related to the Global Taxonomy Initiative that was uh, in the last COP uh, on the uh, key scientific and technical needs related to the implementation of the strategic plan for biodiversity. It's long, but you know, we have a 10 year. Uh, strategic plan under the convention. And to, to implement that strategic plan, uh, once again, you know, scientific and technical needs were raised by parties. And then DNA barcoding was mentioned as a, uh, one of the high um, priority area to develop capacity. So, and then just you know, coming back to the history, sorry about the you know, going back and forth. Um, as I mentioned, that COP2 taxonomic impediment was uh, mentioned by the uh, conference of the parties, which is the highest governing body of the convention. And then uh, three years later, at COP4, Global Taxonomy Initiative was established as a cross cutting issue because to achieve three pillars of the convention. Uh, it is a cross-cutting needs of parties to be able to identify species and monitor biodiversity and uh, make a decision making based on the scientific evidence of the biodiversity that they have, right? And then uh, at COP, Five, uh, GTI coordination mechanism was established. That was a direct um, uh, consulting body for the executive secretary to make a, a course of the, uh, the GTI to be proposed to the conference of the parties. So Scott uh, Antonian sitting over there has been a, a very active member of the coordination you were uh, uh, part about the GDI coordination mechanism. And uh, uh, at COP6 and COP8, uh, GDI program work was established and was reviewed in depth. And then COP11, those uh, history of uh, uh, developing tools by uh, major and botanical gardens were further reviewed and uh, we 
develop this time bound party building strategy for the global platform initiative in support of the strategic plan for biodiversity to 2011 and 2020. So, by now, it's uh, 2018, among those action plans of the party building strategy, uh, the best possible and also uh, best achieved. Uh, capacity building activity was the uh, green economy so far. So I will hand it over to <laughs> Adriana. All right. And thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to thank you. Uh, where's Alex? Alex Bojnenko. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, another Alex. <laughs> I will acknowledge you at the end of that time. So, um, has been done a lot of work in the phase one capacity building uh, on DNA barcoding, and Adriana was a um, core part of the phase two capacity uh, building. Thank you. So, my name is Adriana Radulovic. I work here at Bio. I've been involved in DNA barcoding since 2006, since the Canadian Barcode of Life Network. And uh, for the last two years, I've been involved in the International Development Unit of CDG. Um, and we are conducting a project together with CBD. So I will provide you the meat of the sandwich, and then uh, Junko will provide the other slice of the bread at the end. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we started this collaboration in 2015, and um, the phase one happened during two years, 2015, 2016. So how did we do this? Um, we asked parties, and when I say parties to the convention, I mean the governments that signed the convention. We asked those countries to nominate one person per country who would like to um, be trained in DNA barcoding. Um, it was not just DNA training in DNA barcoding for the sake of being trained in DNA barcoding. There was a title, GTI training course on rapid identification on invasive alien species for achieving Aichi Target 9. If you don't know about the Aichi targets, you can Google it and you can see that Target 9 is about invasive alien species. So during two years, we received well, almost 100 nominations from 100 countries, about half of them, 51 people went through online training and this is again um, we have an online course that is run here through the university of guelph the open ed and it is an introduction to dna barcoding so eight weeks of just doing an online course uh, i think at that time it was dirk who was teaching it i don't know where dirk is um everybody remembers you still and, and they all say hi <laughs> Um, so they had to do a lot of reading and a lot of discussions and a lot of quizzes to pass this course. And then the top, well, half of them, but based on this course, so the best ones came to Guelph for hands-on training. This hands-on training was four weeks of really hands-on training and really intensive hands-on training. Uh, after four weeks, you are very sick and tired of doing sequence editing and other analysis, so you just want to, to go back to your country and, and have a break and then start um, thinking about other projects on DNA barcoding. This is the map for the phase one. So you see a lot of countries nominated people. So everything that is colored means they nominated people. Uh, everything that is in dark color, so green and blue, uh, dark, they came here for hands-on training. So we had 28 people coming uh, during two years. And we have two of them in the audience, Tanya from Belarus and Mylene from Colombia. They actually came here in 2015. They were the first group who came at Bio for hands-on training. So that phase finished in 2016. Uh, before that, just to show you, they really did hands-on training here. We have pictures to prove it. And I think this is an older picture from 2015. You can see them, Jason, here, right? Alex, Paul, the first group that came for hands-on training. Then, phase two. We decided, now that we have this group of people who are trained, so they are called the trained trainers, 
we can move forward. So we can offer a bit of funding, of seed funding for them to apply and have their own workshops in their own countries. And this happened last year. And to give a catchy title, we call this project GTI DNA Pack. We gave a logo. Um, and also one thing that I forgot to mention, the entire project for the last four years, it was in collaboration with CBD, but the funding came from the government of Japan through Japan Biodiversity Fund. So the government of Japan is the country that, that sponsored this project. So we opened a call for applications last fall and we asked for applications, right? Of course, we had some selection criteria, so you know, we have a more uh, organized program. And we asked the people who came here for training, so the GTI trainers, to apply. And then we also opened it to DNA barcoding network institutions in developing countries. Now, I have to say, we did not receive any application from the people who are running DNA barcoding networks in developing countries, which was good. Thank you very much, because <laughs> By not applying to this, you actually gave a chance to these newbies in DNA barcoding to try their hand at writing grant proposals. And we had some really good proposals from people who are early career researchers and who, again, as probably Junko mentioned, and we keep mentioning this over and over again, it is not training for the sake of training in, in DNA barcoding as a as a general tool. It is training in DNA barcoding so that you answer your country's needs. Now, if you don't know, the people, the, the governments who signed the Convention for Biological Diversity, those governments came up with what's called NBSAPs, National Biodiversity Strategy and Action Plans. And they actually found they found uh, very detailed groups of priority taxa, whether they are invasive species or endangered species or um, species, endemic species, whatever. They have, each country has a list of priority taxa. So we asked for proposals that would support implementation of the MBSAPs and the Aichi biodiversity targets. We also asked for endorsement from the CBD national focal point we asked for a scientifically valid content and a sustainable follow-up plan. So the approach of GTI DNA Tech project is to train the trainer, learning by doing a minimalist lab setup. So you just need the minimal list of equipment to get PCR products. And we train them in basic DNA barcoding workflows, basic data analytics, an introduction to bold, uh, project, so we offer project formulation training and project management training. So just basic things so that these developing countries can move forward. We produced, uh, again, a manual in basic DNA barcoding workflows and it will become online probably next year. And we also, I don't want to insist on this because I'm sure there will be a discussion. Um, access and benefit sharing was not a big part of the training, but it was mentioned because you all need to know about the Nagoya Protocol and what is required and what is not. These are the countries that applied. We had 11 countries. I have to say this big country here, which is Brazil, is cancelling due to bureaucracy, but from the other 10 countries, most of them um, submitted proposals on barcoding invasive alien species, plant pests, endangered species, endemic species, and then others were on just general taxonomy or biodiversity conservation. And just to tell you from the, the 10 countries that were here, there is a, a, a very <coughs> intrinsic link between GTI DNA Tech and Eyeball. We have two people, Tanya from Belarus and Mylin from Colombia, who had their workshops. Well, Mylin has it next week. They are here present, so they are leading their national uh, networks. Then there is 30 who couldn't be here, but Emre Keskin was, he was not our trainer, but he was part of the team who was conducting the workshop and he agreed to move forward DNA barcoding in Turkey. Then we have Philippines, Ian. Ian is not our trainer, but his um, grad student was our trainer. And then 
and agreed to move forward DNA barcoding in the Philippines. Egypt. Egypt didn't have a workshop, but Sami Zala came to Sri Lanka where we had a workshop. He helped me very much when I had to handle 24 participants for the hands-on part. Sami was very helpful, and he was interested in carrying on DNA barcoding in, a, in his country. Then Tunisia, there is interest in starting actually a regional network in North Africa. Nigeria, they are still struggling with um, how to deal with biological specimens, but Yes. Uh, this is just images to show you that actually these workshops happen. We are halfway through. The other five will happen next week or starting on Monday. And then I am done with the meat on my sandwich. Um, and then Junko will just tell you briefly the last slide about okay. what's next. Okay, okay. so this is a little bit like a tau to tata, you know. The, this is something we would like to convey the message to the conference of the parties from including this community as well as other taxonomic institutions. So we will organize the Global Taxonomy Initiative Forum immediately before the conference of the parties start in Egypt. And thanks to Sami uh, for conveying this message to your minister to be, uh, to be hosted uh, uh, this forum will be hosted by Egypt. So we would like to showcase best practices, including the training that we have done uh, so far over the last four years. And uh, um, uh, what is it? we would like to highlight the importance of sharing the scientific knowledge, uh, something that Jonathan and uh, the previous speakers you know, uh, mentioned. And we would like to um, more uh, uh, facilitate the advancing taxonomic research throughout the parties that can be used in the convention of uh, the conference of the parties. And also, important thing is, you know, um, contribution of uh, um, this type of technology for citizen science because uh, participatory implementation is the uh, entire UN uh, organization's uh, approach to get uh, citizens involved. So uh, those elements are currently we're discussing with a small group to uh, prepare the message to the COP. And through Sami and uh, Egyptian government, we are planning to input this kind of message to um, African summit, and hopefully high level segments will take up that message as well. So then um, the global taxonomy initiative outcome will contribute to the next 10 years uh, plan of the convention, which is called the COP2020 Biodiversity Framework. So we hope that uh, you know, this community's um, contribution will be an element of the COP2020 uh, biodiversity framework, which is yes, important for this community as well, but more importantly, you know, for parties to make an implementation more tangible and science-based, we do need this element in COP2020. So um, I'm happy to talk. Uh, with everybody uh, during the day, and uh, I heard very uh, uncomfortable sound about Nagoya many times. So I think you know we cannot avoid discussion about Nagoya. So uh, I'm happy to uh, hear from your um, input. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm going to go straight to Michelle.